to target that lower tummy bone. Lower there was a time when home fitness equipment was synonymous with poor craftsmanship and late-night infomercials. But companies like Precor are changing all that, finding ways to apply their commercial-grade technology to the home market. As a Precor dealer, Rick Hartline has witnessed the success of these products firsthand. Precor has created a couple of segments of this industry that didn't even exist. I guess their first big innovation was in 1996 when they came out with the first elliptical. They're mostly known just for their quality. Precor machines are so well made, Rick encourages customers to think of them as lifetime purchases. There used to be a need to maybe sell commercial equipment to a home if you knew it was going to get a tremendous amount of use, really hard usage. Nowadays, give me a family that is going to use it on a daily basis, family of four, their home equipment is going to last, like I said, in most cases, a lifetime. In an increasingly competitive global economy, Precor's success has been due, in part, to superior cost management. For many companies, the most difficult part of that process is determining how and where to assign overhead costs. Prior to the 1990s, traditional costing systems were popular, allocating overhead to products on the basis of direct labor or machine hours. Traditional methods were simple to implement, but not always accurate, so activity-based costing gained in popularity. This method offered increased accuracy, allocating overhead to identified activity cost pools and assigning costs to products using related cost drivers that measure the activities or resources consumed. A company like Precor has to be prepared to fill orders from across the globe on a regular basis. They manufacture from two U.S. factories, cardio equipment in Washington State and strength equipment from North Carolina. When Rick takes orders for individual home-based equipment, he may pull from his existing stock, but large multi-million dollar orders for health clubs, colleges, or corporate gyms must be placed directly through to the factories. Rick recently took an order for 140 elliptical trainers for a corporate client. Let's take a look at this order from both a traditional costing and an activity-based costing standpoint to see which method is best suited for a company like Precor. We'll take a look at traditional costing first. Okay, we've got our data that is relevant to both costing systems. Direct materials, direct labor hours, and direct labor rate per hour. Then our data relevant to the traditional costing system. In this case, the predetermined overhead rate is 300% of direct labor cost. So, doing the math, we have 800 direct labor hours times $18 direct labor rate per hour, equaling $14,400. We multiply that by our predetermined overhead rate of 300% to get $43,200. Adding those up, our total costs assigned to this order equals $112,600. Divide by the number of elliptical trainers, which is 140, and we get a cost per unit of $804.29. Now let's look at this using an activity-based cost system. Starting out again, we've got our data that is relevant to both costing systems, then our data relevant to the activity-based cost system. Instead of a flat rate of 300%, things get more detailed. Under activity cost pools, we see that there are six. Engineering design, machine setup, machining, assembly, packaging and shipping, and building occupancy. Each activity cost pool has a corresponding cost driver. We have overhead rates for each and expected use of cost drivers. So, doing the math, direct materials is the same as before, $55,000, as is direct labor, 800 times $18 equals $14,400. Adding up the overhead activities costs, we have engineering design, 300 hours times $30 per hour equals $9,000. Machine setup. 20 setups at $200 per setup equals $4,000. Machining. 730 machine hours at $25 per hour equals $18,250. Assembly. 1,500 sub-assemblies at $8 per equals $12,000. Packaging and shipping. 150 hours at $15 per hour equals 
Building occupancy. 730 machine hours at $6 per hour equals $4,380. Adding everything, the total costs assigned to the order are $119,280. Divide that by the number of ellipticals, again, 140, to get a cost per unit of $852. Comparing these two costs per unit, we see that the activity-based costing method is higher which is probably reason enough to warrant an ABC approach. More significantly, it is obvious that ABC provides deeper insight into the sources and causes of the cost per unit. This helps managers to prioritize when deciding which activities to control in order to reduce costs, leading to better product costing and greater profitability for Precor. Activity-based costing is not without limitations. It can be expensive. Multiple activity centers require added analysis, and there are still some costs which continue to be allocated arbitrarily. But if a company has product lines that differ greatly in volume and or complexity, if overhead costs constitute a significant portion of total costs, or if managers are ignoring data from an existing system, chances are that ABC would be the superior cost system for a company. <laughs> In the end, you might say that activity-based costing helps Precor to manage costs much in the same way that their products help customers manage workouts. Better data at your disposal and more accurate feedback, all leading ultimately to world-class results.